Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to World of Warships in our Saturday edition video. As today, we're going to be looking at the Tier 10 Premium Soviet Battle Cruiser, the Stalingrad. And Stalingrad is a ship which you can purchase in the armory uh, for steel. And she is a great steel ship choice. Um, so, with that aside, let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, talking about the type of cruiser we're dealing with. So you have light cruisers, you have heavy cruisers, uh, and then you have what I would say battle cruisers uh, as well. And Stalingrad fits the bill of a battle cruiser, um, kind of a mix between a heavy cruiser and a battleship, um, usually due to it being more tanky, having larger caliber guns. Um, those are usually the two categories when you're looking at what makes a ship a battle cruiser. So um, Stalingrad is very much a battle cruiser, especially when we begin to look at the armor on Stalingrad. When you look at the bow, it's got the standard 25 millimeter, but you also have this uh, like icebreaker, uh, 50 millimeter. So you control a lot of ships, sometimes they might aim too low and not likely to pin through here. Um, but if they go for the higher part of the bow and the stern, uh, that is when they're going to be able to do uh, more damage to you uh, when they focus that. Um, Superstructure-wise, uh, 16 millimeter, nothing really fancy there. Um, you will find, um, because being a battle cruiser, the fire duration is 60 seconds, uh, more than what a standard cruiser is. Um, so you'll be taking a lot of fire damage um, on your superstructure. So this is something you have to be mindful of. And you can't take fire prevention. Uh, you could uh, pre-10.0. Uh, but after the commander we worked that they did last year, you can't take fire prevention because um, that would actually be really, honestly, very helpful on the Stalingrad. Uh, take away some of the things going on here. You can see your citadel is above waterline by a good portion. So you're, you're quite vulnerable, um, to be honest, and you really have to be mindful of that. Um, so if you end up showing too much broadside, you can definitely get one-shotted. Uh, but if you are doing what works best in Stalingrad and angling in, um, bow on, um, you're going to have a, a lot better time in Stalingrad um, because of having such a strong bow uh, to a certain extent. But when you come across ships um, that can overmatch you, uh, like uh, Incomparable, Yamato, uh, Musashi, Shikishima, um, you can take damage through the bow and maybe get some to your Citadel. So that's just something you got to be mindful of. So... Now let's go ahead and talk about the modules. So being a premium ship, um, steel ship, you don't have anything beyond to further upgrade here. Uh, it's just these three and five millimeter guns with this, uh, and I have a mod, or not a mod, sorry, upgrade that gets you down to that 18.5 second reload time. Got 36 second turret uh, traverse. As far as the hull goes, you have 72,450 HP. Gunfire control system, you can reach out and hit at 20.4 kilometers, which is nice. And then propulsion, 280,000 horsepower, and you get up to 35 knots. Not taking into account taking something like zero mic flag to get a little bit more out of your speed. As far as upgrades go, um, first slot, we are going to invest in the main armaments modification one. Because what this does is it increases the survivability and accelerates repairs of the main battery. Um, don't have torpedoes on Stalingrad um, because the what it does is is the risk of main battery coming incapacitated is negative 20% and your main battery survivability plus 50% main battery repair time negative 20% the main battery is really the bread and butter of the Stalingrad and that's what you want to keep in action so definitely um, invest in focusing on that um, auxiliary armaments, uh, secondaries on the ship are eh, okay. Um, AA is also, it's decent. Uh, but again, the, the main battery is where you want to invest. And you don't have to worry about taking magazine modification, which reduces the risk of your ship's magazine detonating by negative 70%. Because uh, if you're playing random, ranked client battles, you're going to be going taking the Juliet Combat Signal, which completely eliminates the risk of your ship's magazine detonating. For slot two uh, there are two options that come to mind and where you can go uh, the first is if you don't have coal you can't purchase a um, what do they call it? unique uh, special upgrade um, go for the damage control system modification one because this is going to reduce your risk of catching fire by negative five percent 
risk of flooding, negative 3%. Styling guy doesn't like fire. So when I first started, I think I bought the civilian's fraud radar modification off the bat. But if you don't have enough coal, um, or maybe you've spent your coupon, then I would recommend damage control system modification one first. Um, engine room protection. Uh, I've not had... And the battles I've played so far, I've not had my engine knocked out, nor my steering gears. Um, if that happens, it'd usually be due to a torpedo, typically. Surveillance radar modification is what I recommend taking most. You find it in the armory, and I'll show you real quick in just a moment. But it, uh, the consumable action time goes up by plus 20%. So that's what gets our radar up to a action time of 24 seconds. So I like trying to keep targets lit as long as possible, help my team if they are understanding the importance of maybe focusing and sure that I've lit with that radar. Um, but it also means I can get, um, if I play it white, right, I can get two salvos off in the uh, action time duration of the surveillance radar. Um, you also have defensive A fire modification, and that's really not what Stalingrad is about. It does have a longer action time than most defensive A fires, usually they're 40 seconds, but here it's 60 seconds without having the modification uh, unique up or special upgrade on, sorry. Um, so I still prefer the radar. So um, if you just click on uh, one of the two icons, um, I already have radar, so it won't take me directly to radar, but you go into the armory and here um, where you have upgrades, and you have a list of them, and then here you'll find the surveillance radar modification. You use a coupon, uh, you get these once every month, 12,750 coal instead of 17,000 coal. So I recommend running this on slot two and upgrades for Stalingrad. For slot three, you could take the main battery uh, modification two, uh, so to improve your turret traverse speed, which is at 36 seconds. Um, it doesn't bother me. Usually I'm pretty good about trying to get my turrets uh, in the position they need to be in ahead of time. And I use the uh, default, the right mouse click key. Um, if I need a free look and look around while my turrets are focusing on the direction that I want them to be in. I mean, you saw in yesterday's battle um, how I had to prepare for the Clubair. And so we immediately began turning the turrets in the direction it needed to go. Uh, you don't want to do secondary mod battery modification. You know, secondary brawling. Uh, Russian cruiser. It's usually more the German cruisers that fall in that line. Again, uh, I don't think AA route is a good way to go. If you're wanting to play an AA cruiser, then I would say play something like Wooster, light cruiser. Um, invest in a cruiser that already has better AA specs uh, than something like the Stalingrad. I have taken the aiming systems modification one. Uh, again, I'm investing in the main battery because the main battery shell dispersion is reduced by negative 7%. And you do get a slight buff to your secondary battery firing range, which puts you at 7.7 uh, .7 kilometers. I mean, you actually saw I got a close quarters kill in yesterday's video um, featuring this build. Um, and that was just out of sheer luck. <laughs> but you sometimes will have your secondaries in action. But the main battery, that shell dispersion being reduced, means you're having tighter groups, meaning you're more likely to get more damage in and land your salvos more accurately. So that's why I recommend taking uh, the aiming systems modification one. Uh, for slot four, definitely, definitely recommend taking the damage control system modification two because you're a battle cruiser and the fires last twice as long as they would on a standard cruiser. Um, they get You kind of get more penalized in a battle cruiser. Um, so the fire extinguisher time is reduced by negative 15%, flooding recovery time, negative 15%. I mean, you saw in yesterday's battle that I definitely needed this. Um, we got both dreadnought and fireproof. Um, so it's important for those fires to be put out as soon as possible. Again, because you can't get fire prevention in Stalingrad, just you tend to get fires, <laughs> especially when you have a lot of HE spammers on enemy team. Propulsion modification one, uh, not a big deal to me. I would rather focus on the tankiness and survivability of Stalingrad. Uh, steering gears, let's look at the maneuverability. You have a rotor shift time of 12.5 and a speed of 35. To me, the maneuverability of Stalingrad doesn't feel bad, though I know some people don't like the maneuverability. Like, I mean, you have a pretty large uh, turning circle radius. But it doesn't bother me. I mean, I feel like I, I can do well enough. I mean, you saw, again, in yesterday's video, 
Um, we dodged most of Kluber's torpedoes when we did a stop juke. Um, and then with the rudder shift time, I was able to only eat one of six torpedoes fired at me from his third and fourth set. Um, airstrike modification, nah, because I mean, I mean, right now, as I record this video, it's the beginning of day 11.1. And we don't have submarines right now. Of course, they are going to be coming back. But um, you might have matches where you never have a submarine. So that's why I think damage control system modification 2 is the best route to go. Um, we can talk a little bit more about uh, slot 5 here. So right now I have the concealment system modification 1. Don't get hydroacoustic search so I don't feel torpedo lookout system is worth it. Um, but concealment system modification 1 that reduces the detectability range of the ship in aircraft carrier squadrons. Negative um, 10% by squadron. Detectability range, negative 10%. And dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship, plus 5%. Um, Stalingrad definitely has really poor concealment um, starting out overall. And only by this and then having the camouflage that comes with Stalingrad gets us down to that 14.2 by sea, 8.9 uh, by air. Um, the reason why I like having concealment as more of getting into that position. Um, like let's say you're moving up to an island, um, you're moving around on the flank. Um, having that little bit of extra concealment for me means that I can get in a better position in Stalingrad without being seen, especially if it means I have to show a lot of side, broadside getting into that position. Um, and so it just, it helps, you know, that you don't have even worse concealment, like, you know, being something what, closer to 16 um, concealment uh, stock. So that's why I run it. Um, you also have steering gears modification too. The rudder shift time, negative 40%. Steering gears repair time, negative 80%. Um, yeah, I mean, you'd get better maneuverability, but a lot of times you're just sitting more in alongside an island. Uh, you're sitting in a position, you're locking down a flank or something, like I illustrated in yesterday's video. So I don't feel like steering gears modification 2 is that valuable. I mean, maybe if I was a light cruiser or uh, I was an open gunboating cruiser build, then maybe that becomes a bit more valuable. You also have ship consumables modification. It extends the action time of consumables uh, by plus 10%. Um, so that means a little bit longer duration on the heel, a little bit longer duration on the radar and defensive AA. But again, I... In this case, in scenario with how Sound Guide works, I prefer the concealment system modification just so I can uh, get in a position uh, without the worry of being detected 16 kilometers away, something like that. I'm not sure what Stalingrad is stock off the top of my head, um, but I prefer getting in closer um, before being detected because then once you're in your position, usually you're detected for the most part. Uh, the rest of the battle, as an example, this, this how Stalingrad God works, and you're going to kind of see me talk about that in the commander build. So yeah, uh, as far as slot six, we have focus on the main battery modification. Main battery reload time negative twelve percent. Main battery traverse speed negative thirteen percent. So we take a little bit of a hit there. So that's what gets us uh, to that reload time of eighteen point five seconds. Um, then you pair a drill and rush, and then another commander skill we're going to look at, um, it starts ticking even lower. Um, because for me, like again, I feel the main battery on Stalingrad is where you, its strength uh, lies a lot. So being able to have a quicker reload time is very helpful in my mind. Um, the reason why I don't like going go for gunfire control system modification too, I mean your range is already 20.4. And if you're extending your range even further out, you're just playing more like a battleship. Like, then take Slava, or that's a kind of bad example, it's a research bureau ship. Uh, take Kremlin, uh, tier 10 Russian tech tree battleship. Um, take another battleship, right? When you're fighting more, because, oh, I would really like to have 21 kilometers, then what's the point of being a cruiser that has radar trying to support your team, right? So I don't like it. I don't want to be playing super far away. Um, I like being able to support my team. That's just me personally, more of the type of player I am. Um, so I like to try to get in a little bit closer. Um, our auxiliary armaments modification two uh, focuses on your secondary battery in AA. Um, again, I don't feel like that's where the sweet spot is for Stalingrad. I feel like it is the main battery modification three. 
as far as consumables go, uh, you have your uh, damage control party, action time, five seconds, reload time, 60 seconds. This is pretty standard on cruisers. Um, you have repair party, uh, plus 362 HP per second. We can buff that with the India Delta combat signal. So now we're up to 434. So I like to always run this typically in random and ranked battles. You may notice in yesterday's video, I only had three heals overall, and that's because I got Kuznetsev not too long ago, and I got him up to 13 point commander now, and now I'm running Superintendent to give me additional charges uh, on each of my consumables. Um, and that really helps. Um, I, I'm definitely gonna be using R4 heals, and then you get the Wheel of Victory, Wheel for Victory, uh, gets you uh, a talent on the commander, which we'll talk about a little bit. Uh, yeah, we'll break that down more. So Venice Radar, um, it is the very good Russian 12 kilometer radar, action time of 24 seconds, and paired with our U special upgrade in slot two. Uh, so that means you you can get two salvos off um, before an enemy ship goes dark. Um, so it's really nice uh, when you pair it with the main battery modification three. Uh, defensive A fire, uh, this one is special compared to most other ships. Because like I said, instead of having usual consumable action time of 40 seconds, it's 60 seconds. But your continuous A damage is only plus 25, and damage from shell explosions is plus 300. Um, so it just lasts longer, and you got to see a little bit of the A in action uh, when we were dealing with uh, the Golden Line. The Dutch cruiser kept dropping airstrikes on me. Um, so not in a versus a CV uh, per se, but it's still uh, nice to have. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the commander. So we have Nikolai Kuznetsov. Uh, he is a commander which you can purchase in the armory uh, where you'll find commanders. And I'll just show you real quick. He is probably the best commander you can purchase for coal if you have uh, tier 10 uh, or you have a Russian ship, a uh, higher Russian, tiered Russian ship. Uh, he'll be up here if you don't have him. Um, I've been working on collecting my um, unique commanders, so I'll just show up down here as one of the ones that I have. Um, so you can get him for 175,000 coal. And the reason why Kuznetsev is so good mostly lies in his talents. Um, he has the will for victory. So um, this can be activated once per battle if the ship's HP falls below 10%. So maybe you've seen a Russian ship and you, he's almost dead and you see this, these fireworks in the sky. Um, and that means that uh, he has Kuznetsev on his ship and he's going to start ticking back uh, amount of HP recovered per second uh, plus 0.25% for 30 seconds. And also dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship is plus 20%. So it's actually kind of like dazzle <laughs> uh but uh permanent uh effect it doesn't end after 20 seconds uh, dazzle a skill you can get on destroyers so wealth for victory is quite nice if you can live with what little hp you have left and you notice you're not overextended an enemy just well even if you're real for victory activated they still kill you you also get emergency reserve you saw both of these skills activate in yesterday's video this is if you get the first blood achievement uh where you get an additional charge for all consumables mounted on the ship. So then here you can see I would get five defensive A's, five radars, five uh, repair parties if I activated it right at the beginning of the battle and I hadn't used any of these uh, charges on my consumables yet. The enhanced skill that he has is the consumable specialist. And in this case, it's not the best because it is only thing it affects for us in Stalingrad is the defensive AA. So this is something we're not going to be looking at taking uh, here on the Stalingrad. So as far as looking at what type of build we'd recommend, I'll probably recommend maybe two or three types of builds, but I'll show you primarily what I'm going for. I know other people who run this build. First up, we've got Grease the Gears, uh, the main battery traverse speed plus 15%. So that's what gets us down to that 36 degree or 36 second, 180 degree turn time. Um, because again, the main battery, you know, even though we didn't take the modification that helps improve the turret traverse speed in the upgrades, I at least want to make up for it here uh, with the commander because this is just a good skill to run on Stalingrad with uh, her superb main battery. For a three point commander, uh, I would then recommend going for a priority target. 
it's just really helpful to know um, when you're in a position, uh, let's say, if probably if I would have noticed in yesterday's uh, video when I was on hotspot and we were finishing off that Ragnar, if, I've, if I was looking at priority target, it was two focusing me or maybe there was even three. And if I saw two, I was probably just thinking maybe it was incomparable looking to get a shot on at me. And, it, and I didn't realize it was actually the Stalingrad across the map. So if I would have just paid attention to that a little bit more, um, maybe I would have been aware that Stalingrad was uh, going to take a cross shot map at me. Um, but we still did all right. This also helps uh, in terms of torpedoes. So if you have a destroyer who's switching between uh, his main battery and his torpedoes, you kind of have an idea of when he's dropping them. And you saw me utilize that in yesterday's video when the Kleber rushed me. Uh, I predicted when he dropped his first two sets, we avoided those completely. And then I saw when he was dumping his third, three, third set and fourth set and we only ate one of those six torpedoes. So it's really handy, uh, I would say, in my opinion, on Stalingrad. And we can look at another skill if you don't want to take party target here in a moment. Uh, I would go for Adrenaline Rush for a six-point commander. Uh, improves the main battery, the secondary battery, and your continuous AA damage uh, for each 1% of HP lost. So then your main battery all of a sudden ends up having 18.5 second reload time. Depending on how much health you've lost, you're getting down to 18, and then under 18 seconds, 17 something. Uh, so quite nice. And then for 10 point uh, commander, I would recommend then going for concealment expert. Um, so even with the fifth slot upgrade of concealment and then running concealment on the commander, it still only gets us down to 14.2. So I mean, that really gets at how poor the detectability range uh, is on the Stalingrad. And when we were reading the uh, WoWs Wiki article on Stalingrad, it is uh, among the worst tier 10 ships for concealment. Um, so that is just one of the ways that I think Wargaming was just trying to balance uh, the Stalingrad given her main battery um, and that overall she's a, a pretty good handling ship. That's how to run for a 10 point uh, build. After that, you've seen for a 13 point build, I've gone for the Superintendent. So then we get up to the four heals, four radars, four defensive uh, AA fire consumables. Um, I have consistently found myself using all of my heals uh, in most of the battles, just with how I position and how I'm trying to support my team. So I definitely recommend going for superintendent. So that's just 13 point build. So uh, what about the other eight points we have lying around? Um, so what I'm planning to go for for next, I'm not sure if it's going to be heavy AP shells or top grade gunner. Um, it might honestly be a uh, top grade gunner. So uh, if we take this, it gives us the permanent effect of our secondary battery reload time being reduced by negative 10%. But then when we look at the main battery reload time, uh, we'll go down by 8%, but this is a can-be-activated skill. So um, it is uh, increases the reload speed of the main battery if there is a visible enemy ship within your ship's standard detectability range. So within the standard detectability range of 14.2 kilometers, okay? So if we shave 8% off, so 18.5, uh, you're taking off 1.48 seconds off the reload time. So you're basically dropping down to almost 17 seconds reload time, and then you pair Adrenaline Rush with that, these two skills work together uh, quite handily. And, and you saw, for the most part, in both of those battles, uh, where I was, uh, the, the double future I did in yesterday's video, um, we definitely would have gotten a lot of use out of the top grade gunner. So that's probably, honestly, what I'm going to go for next uh, as a 17-point build. Then after that, the next skill I plan to take is Heavy AP Shells. Uh, this improves the damage of your main battery of the AP shell damage. So you can see that it goes up from, let's see, without it, we are sitting at 9,200. With it, we're sitting at 9,660. Um, because these AP shells definitely hurt when they hit, so being able to up the damage these shells can cause is really nice when you also, again, you're pairing it with the reload time um, within the commander skills. After that, uh, the next skill I take uh, with only one point left, I plan to go for the gun feeder, time 
taken to switch between shell type is negative 50 percent um because the he i mean it's not the best uh per se on the stalingrad but it still does decent i mean you have a 33 percent chance of causing fire uh maximum damage 4500 um so it comes in handy when especially when you're dealing with destroyers so this is what i plan to run uh, as a 21 point build commander um on kuznetsiv on the stalingrad uh, as far as other options are concerned, um, uh, you could swing an AA build. Like, let's say you don't take priority target and you take focused fire training. Um, you can see the AA defense starts to go up, get it up to 92. But again, there are other ships that you can get even up higher than what you can on Stalingrad. So you could go for something like that. And then keep in mind, if we didn't take priority target, we would have two additional points. And then maybe, then I would take top grade gunner. So drop priority target, take top grade gunner. And you get a little bit more of an AA build. Um, and, um, you know, you do get a little bit more damage uh, with the airstrike armament, the, uh, the, the depth, sorry, the, the airstrike depth charge damage. So you do a little more damage to submarines on top of the AA buff. Um, so yeah, drop priority target, take the focus fire training, and you could do the top grade gunner. Um, that would be a build option route to go. I don't see the value of taking RPF on Stalingrad. I'm sorry. I just don't. I don't know if there are players who run uh, RPF on Stalingrad, but for me, I just, I don't see it. Uh, I don't understand because you already have radar and you detect things up to 12 kilometers away. So I don't see RPF being viable. Uh, outnumbered, I don't see it either. Uh, for me, it's not outnumbered. This skill should be called out of position. Uh, just because your ship's characteristics, this is a can be activated skill, uh, but the number of allies within the firing range of your ship's main battery doesn't exceed the number of visible enemy ships. The skill used to be you had to have more enemy ships within your uh uh, range firing range of allied ships but then they kind of backed it off where it's even um so for me i just don't see the value of that um maybe let's say you wanted to get some more use out of the radar if you wanted the radar to last an extra 10 percent uh, longer you could give up priority target and take consumable enhancements, but keep in mind, this skill can help improve four things. And here it only affects one, uh, being the radar. So that's why I have a hard time considering taking consumable enhancements. And that's why I feel like when you're looking at these two, priority target is much more valuable to you as a player. Um, so that is why. So that's why I lean towards gun feeder uh, this route. I think this is the best build. Um, I, you can't sell me on the AA build because I would take, and if I'm going to go for, if I know there's a lot of carriers, I'm going to div up with, let's say, a, a tier 10 clan, a clan mate and a tier 10 aircraft carrier. I'm going to take a different type of cruiser if I'm wanting to play more AA-focused uh, ship build, um, a ship that can do it better than the Stalingrad can because Stalingrad doesn't have the best concealment tier 10, uh, doesn't have the best in tier AA either, and her maneuverability is not the best either. So for me, this really feels like what works best on Stalingrad. If you see there's a skill here I didn't talk about, just ask me in the comments uh, why I don't take it. I don't want to make the video longer than necessary. But I've had a really good time uh, with Stalingrad so far. Uh, if I look at, I was kind of curious to see how I've, I've played a lot of ranked uh, in the Stalingrad. So I'm kind of curious uh let's okay so this is in here number of battles by tier and by tier if you want to see how i've done in the sound guide so far so in terms of ranked battles uh we have 12 battles played 67 percent run rates uh decent destruction ratio and decent xp earnings um so it's just been uh it's been good it's been a lot of fun uh, playing in Stalingrad so far. Definitely recommend this as a steel ship uh, if you are interested in picking up the Stalingrad. Um, I think for myself, this is my second steel ship. Um, I've also had the Borgon, um, but I really think Stalingrad is definitely worth it because the sweet 
sweet 350 or 305 millimeter guns are just they're the bee's knees they're really good so so if you liked today's video give it a thumbs up if you did not give it a thumbs down subscribe if you do want to see more if you're subscribed thanks so much i really appreciate it as we continue to grow the community and channel here with you until next time take care